All right, hey there, fellow coder. Welcome to this next lesson of the Fresh Votes series where we are diving into how to create a real world Java web app from scratch, leveraging technologies like Spring Boot and so on. So in this lesson, we want to uh, really start to expand on our actual business functionality for this application. Uh, currently, we have a login page and a registration page, but nothing uh, above and beyond that. So we need an actual you know, heart and soul of this application uh, and how to bring it forward into something that's actually useful. So uh, one thing I want to do is roll, or roll, not roll, but uh, have another look at our database to see uh, these sort of entities that we're dealing with. So I can sort of uh, re-remember exactly what it is that we're, we're, we are working with. So uh, as you can see in our database here, um, we have users, and that's what we've been working with in terms of logging in and registering with, with users. So that's great. And the authority table goes along with users. Cool. Uh, so the other three tables we have are feature, comment, and vote. Okay. So the feature is essentially something that um, users can uh, request. So the whole point of this application, again, going way back to like video one, two, and three or something, talking about uh, what this app should do. I think it was video two where I outlined the business uh, rules of the application. Uh, essentially, um, a, a business owner should be able to create a um, an, an application uh, such that uh, users can go in and uh, request features for that particular application. Um, and when they request features, other users can vote on those features, whether or not they like them or do not like them. Uh, so one thing, I, and then I guess they can add comments to those features and stuff. Now, one thing I don't necessarily see is, uh, I don't see the ability to add um, a uh, an application, right? A, a, some sort of a, a program or something that users would request features um, to, if you know what I mean. So that's actually odd. I don't know why I don't have that here. So I should probably add that um, comment feature user vote. Yeah, I don't see any way for a user to create first like an, an application um, or a program, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we'll call it product. Uh, the user creates a product. I suppose that's more of a, um, a real world term. So let's go ahead and create that product entity. Again, uh, I don't remember why I, I didn't come up, come up with this before during the uh, design uh, part, probably because I never use the word product um, when working or when creating the, the design. So let's have a product um, as an ID. The product can have a name and the product belongs to uh, essentially one and only one user, right? So a user can create many products, which makes sense. And any one given product should be mapped back to one and only one user. I mean, you could have it mapped back to many users, but um, I think that's a bit too advanced in our case. I think one user should be able to create uh, one, uh, many apps and, and those, sorry, those products can be mapped back to just one user. So it's a one to many um, relationship from user to product or many to one from product back to user. Uh, so there's a product and uh, inside of that product, should we be able to, uh, it's, should there be some sort of a relationship between product and a feature requested by a user? Um, I believe so. So inside of feature, so features, yeah, don't belong to anything, right? So um, I think that's that's the issue. That's the missing link here is we should have a product that can contain many features that get requested by, uh, by other users. Um, so I, yeah, I think that's, that's the issue here. And the features that get requested also don't necessarily belong to a user. And I'm not sure if, well, I guess that's that might be okay. Um, because once someone requests a feature, that person, you know, if other users vote on it and say they like it, no one should be able to remove that. Uh, anyway, that can be, uh, that, that's, that's debatable. We'll see where that goes in the future. But for now, um, we should also have a product um, belonging to potentially uh, or having a relationship with many features, right? So um, a feature belongs to one product and any product can have many features being requested. So we'll have a set here of features. Features equals new, we'll make it a hash set for now. Um, although we'll probably want to have that ordered. Well, I guess we can order that by uh, the number of votes that features get. So, well, we'll, we'll leave that for now as a hash set. Um, but again, we might up, update that later. So, okay. Um, and then let me not forget to do it the other way around. So uh, a user 
um, can have many products, right? So private set of product, we'll call this, oops, products equals new hash set, like so, and then um, feature. So a feature can belong to one and only one product. Uh, product, product, like so. And then also we need to also remember to add our getters and setters and then the relationships as well. Um, so feature belongs to one and only one. So it's a many to one relationship here. In other words, uh, any given feature can map back to one and only one product. That's a many to one type of relationship. And then uh, back to product should have many features. Let's bring in our getters and setters via Alt Shift S and then R was the uh, keyboard shortcut you just saw me use there. Um, also, don't forget generated value. And if uh, I can't remember if we did uh, the strategy, um, if we were using the strategy keyword here, um, if we if we aren't, then I need to remember to do that for all of our entities. And I'll explain why uh, in a moment. But first, let me finish my discussion on the uh, relationships here. So feature goes back to product, many to one, yes, and product here goes to many features. So this is get feature, so this is one to many, okay, many. And also what we need to figure out here is the cascade. This is very important. So what happens, what happens if a product gets deleted? If we delete a product, should all the features uh, be deleted as well? Um, I mean, potentially, but this is where we can run into problems if we have cascades. So if the, um, right, right now there's only one, and I think that'll be okay. Right now there's only one sort of relationship in here um, to, uh, outside of like the, the regular um, objects and whatnot that, that are built into Java, right? The only object here that's not built into Java is this one. So the reason why I'm, I'm sort of pointing this out is it, it's okay then to make this a cascade all Okay, um, because if we make this a cascade all, that means it will immediately delete all the features associated with a product if someone deletes the product. So if someone deletes the product, boom, all the features get deleted. Now the issue there is if the feature has another relationship with another entity um, where you haven't necessarily specified the cascade and then it could cascade delete all the rest. And this is where you can get into a situation where if everything is marked as cascade all, then you can accidentally delete your entire database. Okay, this time I've done this before. So you have to be really careful when you use cascade type all, you need to make sure that you understand all the cascades along the way, because um, you could cascade delete everything. So anyway, it's safe here because we really do want to delete um, the pro or the features related to a product in this case. And, uh, and there's no other objects here that it could cascade delete to. Okay, so we should be okay there. So, uh, that's that uh, relationship there. And then user, do we have a, no, we haven't specified relationship. This looks like a many to one. So a, a user, one user can create many products and therefore um, one product belongs to one, only one user, which is a many to one. But then products here, this relationship from the other side, well, I haven't created the uh, getters and setters yet. Let me do that for products. This is a one to many. And again, this is where, okay, cascade now. Uh, do we wanna, you know, we, we need to be careful here. Because if we delete a product, do we wanna cascade delete everything, right? Um, so if a user deletes a product, or sorry, rather, if a user is deleted, do we wanna cascade delete other products? And this is where I don't think we do, right? So if, if a user shuts down their account, we don't necessarily want to delete all the data along with it because that could be a bit confusing. Um, so let's make this only a, uh, a persist um, relationship. Ooh, and I forgot the rest of the, the piece of the picture here. So there's other things inside of the one to many. Uh, we want fetch, usually we want fetch type lazy because it is faster in terms of performance. Um, and then mapped by, we need to map out, we need to tell it what we use to map the user here inside of the relationship and so inside of the product. So inside the product, it's just called user is the variable name. So we just say map by user. Now I forgot to do that inside of this one. Yes, so I did inside of the product to features, I only uh, specified a cascade. I also want to specify um, the fetch type. Again, should be lazy. 
because it's more performant that way and mapped by so what do we use inside of a feature to point back to a product so what do we use in terms of the name of the variable inside of feature to map back to the product so inside of feature we use the word product like so so that is going to be our mapped by cool so that is all set so now let me go back to talking about the generated value here Okay, so there was an update to, uh, and let me just see if I've embedded ID. Uh, let me see, feature is what we just, uh, although, no, we added product. So the feature does use identity. The product uses identity. The user uses, okay, so it looks like I might've already talked about this in a past lesson, so I won't go into too much detail, um, but basically, this in order uh, when we say generation type dot entity what we're saying is we want to leverage sort of the built-in native behavior of our database in terms of generating the next primary key so if we insert a new value into the feature table or if we insert a new value into the user table or whatever table it is we want to leverage the native um, auto increment inside of the database provider that we're using so in other words we're using MySQL here we want MySQL to handle the primary key generator Okay, if we use generation type auto uh, with, I think, Spring Boot version 2 and up, which leverages, I think, Hibernate 5.2 and up or something. Um, basically, there was a change in Hibernate with the way it, it handles the generation type auto. So if we were to use generation type auto pre Spring Boot 2, uh, but don't quote me on exactly 2, it might be 2 or 2.1, but somewhere around version 2 for Spring Boot, um, it leverages Hibernate version whatever, and in that before that version of Spring 2, so maybe Spring 1.5, let's say, um, so that maybe uses Hibernate, you know, 4 or something, uh, the generation type dot auto, what it did was it just did what we wanted to do, which is leveraging the native auto uh, increment inside of MySQL, okay? But then when we upgrade to Spring Boot 2 or 2.1 or whatever the version is, and it upgrades Hibernate to, I think, 5, 5.2, 5.1, whatever it is, um, this behavior is different. So the auto generation type no longer uses the native embedded, you know, built-in auto increment um, from the MySQL database. What it does instead is it uses its own Hibernate sequence thing. So it generates a whole new table and it has to do reads and writes from that Hibernate sequence table inside of your own database to figure out primary keys to distribute across the application. So um, that's just unnecessary in terms of our use case and, and really in most use cases from what I can tell. Um, and it really does an excessive amount of, uh, of reads and writes to this additional table that's really just sort of useless. So really, we don't want to use auto anymore when we're using Spring Boot, like I said, 2 or 2.1 and above. We want to specifically say, hey, leverage the native built-in auto increment of our particular database provider. So um, to me, this just makes sense. I don't know why they made that change. I'm sure they had their reasons, but um, it actually, in my own professional career, it caused issues with some other apps uh, that really slowed them down because of all the extra reads and writes. So that was kind of a weird curveball that they threw at us. But anyway, um, that's where that comes from. So, okay, we've got our uh, feature um, entity created. I was hoping to get into actual business logic now, but apparently we just, you know, we got sidetracked because we had to. In my opinion, this feature, um, what we call it, uh, entity should have existed from the from the, the get go. But there you go. Now we've created it. So let's run our application and make sure that it creates the table for the feature um, entity. And I see alter table fresh votes add column product ID. Okay, I'm pretty sure that makes, well, feature didn't it not exist, create table product. Oh, sorry, we added a product, right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We had the product, not the feature, I keep. So we added product, which is why it's got a question mark here. The feature, we, we added the, um, uh, the foreign key. So that's why we see the foreign key there uh, in the, where is it, the console. Um, so feature gets a, a foreign key back to product. Product table gets created and uh, some foreign key constraints also get added. So that's perfect. That's exactly what uh, we wanted to see. Um, so now when we go to our database and do a refresh here, uh, we should see a product table pops up. Um, and so there's a user ID there and feature has a product ID in there. So a user's um, points to product 
and then product or feature points to product. So I think that makes sense in terms of the um, the workflow. So now in the next video, I know I promised we get to uh, business logic, but yes, like I said, we need that extra table there. So now what we're going to do is in the next video, when uh, when we log in, we essentially should have the ability to create a new product. So as an owner, as a user, we can create a product and publish that product, right? So there you go. That's another thing that um, we should probably uh, have as a, as a value in the product is, is whether or not it's published, right? Whether or not it's live. So maybe we should do that uh, inside of here, inside of the product. We should have a... Um, uh, column for, I don't know, Boolean, you know, is live or, oops, sorry, live or something like that, or, you know, published. Okay. Because when someone is creating a product, you know, they might not want to publish it just yet. So that I could see that as being a helpful feature. Um, so we'll add the published, um, column as well, and we'll reboot our server and that should add a new column to our database. And there it is, alter table product, add column, uh, published. Okay, so now the product, oops, what did I just do? Let me close that. So now we refresh the table, product has a published column. So easy as that for adding new new columns to databases with uh, leveraging entities with JPA and Spring Data and that can, well, JPA in this case and Hibernate. So yes, in the next video, essentially we are going to have a button that we'll create on a screen. So on our dashboard or something, we'll have a button to create a new product. Um, and we can start the process of uh, creating the products and having products being able to have features requested inside of them and then having the features inside of them uh, being able to maintain comments as well as upvoting and downvoting in that whole uh, can of worms. So that's sort of going to be the, um, the uh, path uh, into the future here. So uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, take care of yourself. Happy learning and bye for now.